Okay, so the next talk is by Karsten Chong. So Karsten, take it away. Okay, first I would like to thank um, Ivan and Evgeny for organizing this meeting. Um, so it's my pleasure to be here and uh, give uh, an overview of a recent result about um, asymptotic behavior of the stochastic heat equation with Levy noise. And this is um, joint work with Quentin Berger, um, Peter Kevey, and Hubert Lacroix. So uh, let me directly start with the equation that I would like to consider in this talk. So what you see here is basically the heat equation in D dimensions, okay? Um, with a nice initial condition. So for simplicity, I would just assume that it's one. And we also have a noise on the right-hand side of the equation. And the novelty here is somehow that what we would like to put here is the Levy space-time white noise. So if you're familiar with um, you know, usual space-time white noise, the only difference here is that we no longer assume that the noise is Gaussian, okay? Um, in front of noise, we also have a coefficient. And for simplicity, I will assume that this coefficient is always either one, um, so that's the case of additive noise, or that it's a linear function, okay? In that case, um, people refer to it as either the case of multiplicative noise or the parabolic Anderson model. Um, if you're not familiar with um, Levy space and white noise, let me give you a few examples. So the simplest example is the case of a Poisson noise. In that case, the noise is just a sum of Dirac delta masses that you put at um, space time locations determined by a Poisson point process, okay? Um, another important example is um, alpha stable noise. Actually, um, in a recent paper by Berger and Lacroix, um, they have shown that the stochastic heat equation with a multiplicative alpha stable noise um, arises as certain scaling limits of directed polymer models in a heavy tail environment. Okay. Um, what you have to remember for the remaining part of this talk is that the jump distribution of this noise um, is governed by its so-called Levy measure lambda. For example, if you have the Poisson noise, um, lambda is just the Dirac at one. Um, so you have jumps always of size one. If you have an alpha stable noise, the Levy measure is given by this um, power law density here. Okay. Now, um, what we're interested in today is to study the macroscopic behavior of the solution. So first, when we fix a spatial point and consider T um, going to infinity and also the other way around. So we would also study um, the behavior for fixed T as the spatial coordinate gets large. So let me start by showing you um, the results in a very simple setting. So that's probably the simplest setting that you can imagine. So we fix the spatial point, say zero, and we consider the path in T of the solution um, subject to, a, to an additive Poisson noise in dimension one. So that's the simplest case that you can imagine. And what you basically see is um, in this simulation that the um, solution grows linearly in time as expected except that for certain time points like here or here, you see huge peaks in the solution, okay? Um, what you can actually show is that the solution satisfies a weak law of large numbers. So if you normalize the solution by time, um, this will converge in probability to its mean, which is given by one, okay? Um, on the other hand, the strong law of large number fails. So if you look at this quotient and take the almost sure lim soup, this would be plus infinity. In other words, um, the peaks that you see here prevent the solution from converging to the mean one here. And we refer to this phenomenon as additive intermittency. So additive, because the peaks that you see in this solution are caused by single jumps of the noise, and they already appear as you know, explained here in the case when you have additive noise. So this is in sharp contrast to the Gaussian case where you do not have such um, high peaks in the additive case. Um, so actually you can even show more. When you take a non-decreasing deterministic function f, um, you may wonder whether you can normalize the solution in such a way that you see a non-trivial limit for the lim soup. And this result tells you that it's not possible. So whenever you have such a function f and you normalize the solution by f, the lim soup will always be plus infinity or zero depending on whether one over f is integrable around infinity or not, okay? So there's no proper upper gauge function, so to speak. And this is different from the Gaussian case where we have a law of the iterated logarithm. Um, and also we would have a strong law of the large number in this case, okay? So the additive intermittency is exclusive to the Levy case, so to speak. All right, um, you can even show more. So this simple um, you know, stochastic process has an even richer structure. So when you look at, um, 
a sampling different from continuous time. So if you look at the discrete time sampling, so you sample on the integers, for example, or root n or n to the point three, you will see different behaviors depending on the subsequence that you choose. So for n and root n in dimension one, you will not see intermittency peaks at all. So the, the growth is linear, okay? So you do have the strong law of large numbers here. However, if you take point three, you start seeing these peaks. And in general, you can de actually derive necessary and sufficient conditions for um, having the strong law of large number versus additive intermittency on any discrete increasing subsequence of time. Um, I don't have the time to explain uh, you know, the proofs in much detail. Let me just mention that the proof is based on um, combining a Poisson point approach with a multi-scale analysis. So you have to analyze how many jumps are there in what type of distance to the point that you're interested in and what type of uh, peaks do they lead to. Okay. So instead, let me mention um, another result in the other direction. So what we have seen so far is uh, the behavior for fixed uh, space in time. Now we want it to, to fix time and vary x. And actually, you see very similar results. So assuming that your noise has a finite 2 over d moment, you get again an integral test with a, you know, a slightly different formula here. So again, the, 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 the tallest peaks of the solution in space um, will not allow for a proper normalization, okay? Um, the surprising result, however, is here that this result, and that's surprising if you are familiar with the Gaussian literature, for example, is that this result actually holds true for both additive and multiplicative noise. So in other words, in the Levy case, no matter whether you have a constant sigma or a linear sigma, the tallest peaks will be of the same size, roughly like this, which is very different from the Gaussian case where we all know that um, the constant sigma case versus the linear sigma case, they belong to very different universality classes. So the growth of the solution in space is very different. Um, the way you prove you know, such a result in the Levy case is that you have to obtain sharp tail bounds for multiple Levy integrals in a, when you do the, the chaos expansion for the solution. Um, let me mention that this condition that I've imposed in this theorem is important. So it's important that the solution have a finite two over d moment. Otherwise, we conjecture that the tails will be different between additive and multiplicative Navy noise. So that's something that we still haven't proven yet, but that's um, our conjecture at the moment. So um, what we have seen so far is um, the behavior of the heat equation with additive noise, both in time and space. So you have this phenomenon of additive intermittency. We've also seen the behavior of the solution with um, multiplicative noise in space, which is um, surprisingly the same as for additive noise. Um, for the final uh, part of this talk, I would like to consider the temporal asymptotics when you have multiplicative noise. So that's the only case left, okay? Um, in that case, I don't have pathwise results yet. So um, what I'm going to tell you about are asymptotics concerning the moment. So let's say that the solution U has uh, exhibits moment intermittency of order P, I just denote it by IP for simplicity. If these lower and upper moment Lyapunov exponents are strictly positive and finite respectively, okay? Um, the type of results that we can get are the following. So if you have multiplicative noise and your noise is centered Levy, um, with a finite cube moment, then under reasonable conditions, you can show that in dimension one, you have intermittency for all orders P that are reasonable. And in dimensions two or greater, um, in that first paper, we could show that you have intermittency for P sufficiently close to one plus two over D. This is a bound that you cannot cross because the solution will not have finite moments of that order. So that's a natural bound um, on the range of P that you can study, okay? Um, the main techniques um, use uh, moment lower bounds for Poisson stochastic integrals combined with uh, renewal theory. I should say, of course, that you know, there's a whole bunch of literature on that topic. When you look at the case of Gaussian noise, I cannot possibly mention all the people and all the works that uh, on that topic. I just mentioned the first two that I'm aware of and the last two that I'm aware of. Okay? So please apologize if you, know, you have also contributed to the area, but you don't appear here. So it's in these dot, dot, dots here. Okay. Now, uh, my last slide is about an extension that um, I was able to obtain with uh, Quentin Berger and Hubert Lacroix in the last week. So everything that I'm saying here is conditioned on the, you know, on us not having made a mistake in the last week. Okay. 
So we could obtain an extension of the previous theorem in the following direction. So first we could show uh, that also in dimension two, we have intermittency for all uh, possible exponents P, but that in dimension, dimension three or greater, you have a different um, behavior. If the noise has a finite one plus two over D moment, then for any P, you will not have intermittency if beta is small, but you do have intermittency if beta is large. This is actually something that is not surprising if you're familiar with you know, the literature um, on parabolic Anderson models with, a, with discrete space, you do see a similar thing. So you do have that, uh, you have intermittency for all P's in dimensions one and two, and only for large betas in dimensions three or greater. The novelty here is now this third point here. So whenever your noise, um, fades to have a finite one plus two over D moment. And that's, for example, the case when you have alpha stable noise for all uh, alphas that are you know, admissible, then you will actually have intermittency for all values of P, even in dimensions three and greater. Okay, so there's a real distinction between whether you have a finite one plus two over D moment or not. And the main techniques used here um, is to use a Poisson point representation for size bias measures um, coming from the uh, polymer representation of the solution and to combine this with um, certain decoupling techniques. Okay, I think uh, my time is almost over, so I stop here. Um, and I just let I mention, so these are the references. I won't go through them in detail. If you're interested, please have a look at them. All right, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Karsten. Um, so let's, I'm gonna stop the recording and then,